What's up? What's happening? How is everyone out there? I'm live with, yep, that's right. He is known as Papo, Alberto, and my dad. Uh, welcome to Dad Talks. This is a mock podcast, just uh, pretty much entailing us tr- testing and trialing multiple podcasting streaming services so on the other line there he is is my dad you can call him papo i don't know how he will feel if i call him papo i'm just gonna call him dad (laughs) there he is hey ladies and gentlemen i'm doing really well hi this is alberto uh papo santiago uh i'm also known formerly from the wfan as papo from gun hill depot so hello How's everybody going out there today? I'm here with my son, and we're here to talk a little bit. So how you been, Antonio? I've been good. I've been, you know, just dabbling, dabbling the podcast game. So we're actually here to talk to you about some sports. I know a lot of um, dads and daughters have a great relationship with their with their dad about just talking about sports, talking about, you know, that's how a lot of people uh, just come about in the when, in their childhood, really, is just by doing sports with their dad. Well, I don't know about their mom, but my mom really wasn't involved with sports too much. But, I mean, you can have an active mom. That's cool. But uh, for, for most kids, especially sons, it was their dad. So we're here to talk to you about some sports. Um, Knicks, Jets. Yankees, yes, we're from New York. Uh, most of our team sucks. Mets, um, yeah, as soon as I say suck, I have to list, list the Mets out there because, you know, they're just part of that dynasty that sucks. And even if you want to talk Islanders, if you want to talk Rangers, that's fine too. We're, we talk every single New York sports on here. There you go. Um, you know, it, it's been one of those seasons where uh, really – uh, New York sports, uh, if you're a, a Nick fan, if you're a Met fan, if you're a Jet fan, right now if you're a Giant fan, if you're a Rangers fan, if you're a Nets fan. But man. there's there's light at the end of the tunnel, Dad. There's yeah. light. You can see it. Just as just when you think you're fading in and you're about to die and the only thing you see is black, you're dizzy, you're, you feel faint, you have all those heart attack symptoms, the Yankees bring you back from the light and they're like, oh, here it is. This is the one and only possibility that we have for a championship for New York. Oh, uh, this is true. Uh, now, uh, my son here is biased because he's a big time Yankee fan, and I'm a Met fan, unfortunately. So, you know, Mets, my entire team sucks. But uh, no, the Yankees are 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 going to do well right now. They're they're uh, battling the Rays and you know they have bad blood between those them two you know they're they're doing all kinds of stuff that uh you know uh they yeah, had let's... bad blood so what do you what do you what do you say I mean the Yankees in three is that it or uh listen they're they're riding a hot streak right now after after destroying a very well team in the Cleveland Indians they were young uh, just probably younger than Yankees uh had a lot of spunk and um, they had a lot of momentum riding into that series, and everyone thought that the Yankees were going to lose. But here we are, two-game series sweep, facing the Rays. Now, you know, I this could be their year. This might as well very be their year to win. Well, the problem there is, though, you got to remember that the Rays, they've got all these great live arms. They've got... They've got like five starting pitchers that throw so, in the high nineties, you know, and so, it's and I'm I'm gonna highlight this and maybe we could bring them on, maybe we can't. Uh I wanna talk um a friend of mine, James Karinchek. Okay. And he was on the Indians. He's the reliever that dressed up as as wild things, uh, uh Vaughn from you know, Ward number ninety nine came out to Wild Things. Uh, had the haircut as him. What's that movie called? Uh, you mean uh, Major League? Major League. That's it. Yep. That's the mm-hmm. one. Yep, he yep. replicated that. Uh, same ensemble uh, came out, bases loaded on that series, 
and he was the best reliever that they had all year. Granted, you just don't throw a rookie, uh, granted, to the postseason, bases loaded, with Geo up, which is a hot hitter, and say, hey, we're going to need you to do your wild thing and strike this guy out to get us to get us out of the inning. Right, that right. Back, that backfired on James. And let me tell you, I've, I've caught many of James' games, and he is... He is very much that guy that you can count on. But, I mean, yet again, postseason, the the air feels different for sure. Absolutely. And the Yankees, uh, I guess they come with a chip on their cho- shoulders, you know. I mean, um, they they got off to a hot start, and then they, they lost a lot of games in a row. And, uh, you know, Aaron was hurt, and, and yeah, they Stanton are, was wor- they are hurt. They are feeling it now. They are but now, it. even now, yes, the race. even yeah. Gary Gary Sanchez got into the yak. I mean, here's a guy who uh, basically was uh, everybody's you know leaving him off the the roster, or they wanted to do that. Some people, and uh, you know, he he comes he, he came through in a big way in the, in the, the game too, you know, against the Cleveland Indians. So so you know, it's just that postseason magic, you know, that they have. Do you do you think that if Gary Sanchez wasn't playing baseball, you would think he would be a bum, like like a legit bum, like a bum off the streets, like the Alante West was a bum off the streets, uh, probably not on drugs, but you know I can just sense that Gary's probably one of those guys that like wants to bum a cigarette off you if he wasn't playing <laughs> baseball. Right now. Like, oh hey, wow, ask you That's... for a cigarette, we'll take a cigarette, and then afterward he'll ask you for a lighter too. Yeah, uh, that's that's really that's hard, man. That's hard because uh, I mean he's a good ball player. He's just uh, he doesn't he doesn't deserve that. Yeah, <laughs> he, he um he just lost his swing somewhere, and and you know he's he's one of those guys. But you know he gets on a hot a streak right slump. now. That's what it is. It's a sophomore. So I, I don't know how many years he's been. In the league oh no, the he's 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 got more than that. He's got at least five years, you know, in the league. So, what I mean. Um, so how many years has he been in? And you've you got the Gary. I mean, I've got the MLB. Well, I, just, app. I just feel like a fool now. I mean, it feels he's like what? I don't even follow baseball. He's been there a couple of years. He's about six five, six years. years. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Well, well, his first, his 2015 year uh, doesn't count because he had two uh, at bats. So that's just a wash. That was just hit them bringing him up one day. But yeah, 2016 was his official. He's He's 27 now. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 he's, he's been around the block. It's not like he's a young guy. I mean, All technically, the organization too. Uh, technically, he's a veteran. You know, I mean, he's uh he's one of those guys that's been here forever. So, uh, you know, you hope that he 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 continues the hot streak and uh, you know handles the pitchers better. Uh, his defense has always been in question. Uh, you know, he doesn't block the oh, balls. He, he doesn't throw out enough runners. But, I mean, in, in MLB, you know, how many catchers do that anyway? Let's move on. Let's go switch subjects to the Knicks. Let's go Knicks basketball here. I know you don't like it. I know it's a tough <laughs> subject to go to. It's tough in my heart to go to. I tear up every time I think about it. Uh, <laughs> New York Knicks basketball versus... The Brooklyn Nets basketball. First I mean, all, go ahead. Thank you. First of all, the Knicks will always be the number one basketball team, no matter how much they suck in New York. If you are a Brooklyn Nets fan, you are buying into a team that buys everyone practically. They bought Kyrie. They bought KD. They they should not be in New York. Go back to New Jersey. Go back to what you were. Fuck off. Let's just let's just stop here. Let's let's concentrate on, on the one and only New York. We already have have three so called teams for football in New York, even though two of them play in the Meadowland over there in New Jersey. Um, let's just concentrate on the Knicks right now. Uh, Knicks basketball. 
Um, I heard of potential. They might get Chris Paul. They might get uh, Montrose Harrell. Um, what do you think about that? What do you think about them possibly well, getting a superstar? Maybe Giannis coming aboard. I don't know if he wants to even come near Dolan, but. You know, the problem the problem with the Knicks has always been a, a, a long, long journey with them. I mean, um, I'm all for getting Chris Paul in, uh, 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 but, you know, what are they going to give up for him? How long is his contract? How much money is he, are the Knicks going to be putting out for this? Is he going to be That's the Chris? That's never been an issue. Money has never been an issue for the New York Knicks organization. No, but you got to remember, though, are you – taking a superstar from one team that's uh, in his 30s, coming to New York, and what is he going to – is he going to turn out to be a mellow? You know, mellow was great when he was, you know, in, in the beginning, you know, but he got older. And so, um, you know, and you can't expect Chris Paul to come in here and be uh, New York Knicks savior. I mean, he's a good ball player like that and it will help. What? Yeah, I, I agree. Not at that age. Uh, I, I feel like he could be a key factor with a couple other contributing parts. But um, as far as you need to maximize the potential of Knox, you need to maximize the potential of R.J. Barrett. And uh, you, whether it's not Chris Paul, we, we need to find a point guard. I don't know through the draft this year if we can get lucky with the lottery pick and pick up a, you know, a potential stud. You know, that's what we need. We just need to get lucky and we need to pick up a potential stud, just like we did with Chris Chris Taps. And then he had that whole accusation with, um, the, you know. Yeah, he, he you know, what, coming in. the bottom line is that he wanted to get out of New York and he, you know, uh, you know, his his brother slash agent uh, was making all these demands on New York and New York said, you know what? We're not going to do the demands. You, you know, we're, we're going to trade you, and then that's what wound up happening. Um, I think with the Knicks, though, you know, what are you going to do with uh, Frank? You know, uh, uh, the point guard, the Frank, and uh, um, you know what? I I don't mind keeping him as a backup. He is a solid backup for a superstar or a starter. A quality caliber starter because that's not what he is he is a role player he is a all right let me get in there let me hustle my ass get some points get my plus and minus is going to be up on frank that's for sure he is not a shooter he is not an offensive threat but he is a great defensive tool for late game stretches especially when you have let's say a um uh John Morant, John Morant, or Trey Young, rather. Let's Trey Young, he's even perfect example. Let's say you have Trey Young. We all know Trey is great. He's a three point shooter. He's been compared to Curry, but he is a defensive liability. But another word, like Frank, Trey gets tired. Frank comes in. You know, you're not going to give up any points. Oh, absolutely. I I think he that's his his strong point that he he's a defensive guy. Uh, he runs the team pretty decently. But he, he he's just no there's no offense there and and it's really strange because you thought he would develop into a, a strong offensive force, uh, being that he played in Europe and he was a, he used to score a lot in Europe and you know I mean I don't I don't even think he's uh, averaging for a career in double digits. You speaking know? of out, speaking of out of country, why on this earth is. The New York Knicks giving LaMelo Ball an opportunity for a tryout, or not even a tryout. Why are they even talking to him? He is never, never, ever, ever going to get to that point where the Knicks are going to be able to pick him because he's going to be gone by then. So why are they wasting their time? Please tell me. Uh, are, they, are, they, are they potentially going to trade up? You know, they might, and, 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 and Melo might just drop. You know, I mean, for all the hype that that they that Melo's, uh, you know, uh, been going through, you know, I mean, uh, it's hype. I mean, he really hasn't he he really hasn't played with the what you would call quality college players, or you know, uh, I mean, he left high school early and then he went he went to Europe to play, and uh, I mean, what do you really got there? You know, so now there's let me ask you this. Dad, 
if you're the New York Knicks and you have the potential to get LaMelo Ball at the pick that we are now, I believe it's six or eight. I'm not too sure. If you have the potential to get him, are you getting him? Because g- given our point guards, are are you getting him? Oh, I mean, I would have to say yes, um, because you there's not another point guard in the in the draft like that unless there's some kind of find later on in rounds. But um, yeah, you I would definitely take him. You know, if he drops that far or if they trade up a little bit, because don't forget the Knicks also I I believe the Knicks have three first round picks in this draft. So you know, hey, they can get lucky. You know, they can. They can trade, trade, uh, trade up, and uh, you know maybe trade one of their other picks. You know I don't know if they they want to do that or they want to build around it. So, but I would I I'd pull eight. the trigger. They are eight. Just to just to clarify, they are picking eight, and they also have the twenty seventh pick. Um, right, and they they should have something like the thirty four for the fortieth pick. No, something like that. Thirty eight. Thirty. The thirty eighth pick. See, I was right. So. So. You know, you're figuring out of uh, three of those picks, or at least the eighth and twenty seventh. You, you might, you, you have to get lucky. You have to. You just, there's just no question that they, there's a superstar within every single draft. You just have to find them, just like how um, Mitchell um, for the Utah Jazz mm-hmm. was picked. What almost. 20th rather or in the 20 20 range right 20 right to 30 range he is now a superstar something has to give to bring this franchise back to life i don't know what oh. that is or what it could be but they have to figure out something but i do think with the new administration that they presented i think they have a good shot uh they just need to get rid of dolan dolan needs to sell the team end the story i don't know i i it... That's not going to happen because Dolan, unfortunately, Dolan has nothing else. It's like the Wilpons finally selling the Mets, you know. Let him uh, go play his corny fucking music somewhere. I don't know. Let him go retire. That's it. I mean, he can retire to a great life. But, you know, because he um, he sold Cablevision and he sold this, you know. I mean, I mean he's, he's, got, he's got money. It's not like he has to work. I think it's the whole thing that he feels that the Knicks are his, you know, and they are because he paid for them. But, you know, he um, he's just de- detrimental to the team. He's always butting, you know, uh, putting putting his two cents in. It's not like he's George Steinbrenner who would put his two cents in, but actually, you know, give you something. You know what I mean? He, you know, Steinbrenner, he, for all the me- meddling he did, his number one concern was to win. Right. And Dolan, I don't know where Dolan's at. I mean, I'm sure he he thinks to win. Speaking of Dolan. Kind of bring kind of brings me going to the Jets because there's been recent rumors of firing Gase. So get rid of Dolan. Let's go go to the Jets. Listen, I personally I personally never liked that whole. Uh, Adam Gates, you know, coming from Miami and picking him, uh, picking him up. Uh, I, I never like, I don't like his offensive scheme. He, you know, it might have worked somewhat well in Miami, but he didn't do that great in Miami. Let's face it. And and then, um, uh, it's just there's no commu- I, I just feel there's no communication there. And did you happen to see? Their practices that they, they, they go live, you know, um, when they practice at the in Long Island, uh, you know, that there were a couple of times guys almost came to fisticuffs. Uh, you know, the practices aren't being run well. Listen, Adam I, Gase, if if you're if you're Trevor Lawrence, I don't know if you if you know who Trevor Lawrence is. Mm-hmm. I have it pulled up. If you want to take a look, Trevor Lawrence is the top quarterback prospect yeah he's the number one i mean he's he's playing at clemson and i can tell you that if the next i mean and then uh, if the jets go and they wind up going 0 and 16 do you now this is the key do you trade them you you pick them and what happens to san darnold do you trade them now 
Uh, does Sam Darnold have the upside? I I believe Sam Darnold is a good quarterback. The problem with Sam Darnold is he has no offensive weapons around him. He's got no running back. He's got no wide receivers. You know, I can, mean, so can the same can the same be said about Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow's a first year quarterback. He's mm-hmm. coming in there. It, it's not like we know he, they're not going to get to the postseason, but he's already produ- produced a tie, and he's already produced a win. Yeah, yeah. I, he, I, he, Sam Darnold has not been able to do. You got to remember though that. Um, with Sam Darnold, it, the, it's the defense that's killing them, too, you know, and the offensive line. I mean, he what, he's sacked the other day, he sacked five times. I mean, that's ridiculous. You, I mean, you put Tom Brady back there and he gets sacked five times, he's done. So I, it, it, it's, you know, can you get a quarterback that carries the team and elevates the team? Yes, you can. But Sam Darnold's not – that bad of a quarterback uh, I mean he proved that last year when he came back from the injury that he had he came in he played decent ball he protected the the the, the ball well I think that's his biggest problem because he doesn't protect the ball you know and uh, he had that problem back in college I don't know if you saw the Broncos and Jets game but he looked pretty snazzy coming out of that run for uh, that almost 20 yard run for a touchdown yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, oh, get off me. How about <laughs> that? Listen, offensive line, if you don't want to block me, I'll run for my life and I'll score. Don't worry. I'll celebrate by myself, too. Eat it. That's what yeah. He's well, I, and that, he's, a thro- he's a throwing quarterback. This yeah. guy doesn't run. Yeah, he's young. He's pretty athletic. He doesn't run. He can't run. But you know what? He's starting to show some, some upside and uh, say, fuck it. Uh, I'll take it in my own hands. I'll score. I like it. I like him. But if you're if you're the Jets and you get the number one pick, Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence might just go back and say, I'll wait another year. I really don't want to go with the Jets. Well, I, I don't think I mean, so. Unless he pulls an Eli and says, uh, you know what? We're going to wait. We're going to hit free agency. We're going to, you know what I mean? But I don't know what the contingencies are there. I don't know what the rules are. Right. So, I, I don't think I, I don't think that he uh, he would shy away from being uh, the Jets quarterback. I just think that um, uh, I just think that you know that's how the NFL is. If you're the number one and and the Jets happen to pick you at number one, you you're happily go over there. Uh, but you know that creates a dilemma. I mean, anyway, um, maybe it gives him uh, uh, one year as a red shirt guy. You know, learning the system. You know, you don't push him into the starting lineup right away. And then maybe later on the Jets trade Darno and make him the number one. So either way, you know, he can come in and, and be the backup uh, for a year or two, you know, and learn the system. Anyways, what what we both know is Gase needs to leave and move 0-5, 0-6. Oh, and five, oh and six. Oh, you I have, absolutely you have to get, you gotta you get have rid to get of him. him. Yeah, you, you got to get rid of him. He, um, uh, you know, like I said, uh, the offensive schemes are not well uh, thought of. And he was he's supposed to be this great offensive guru, which he's not. The defense, did you he's see? A successful uh, tenure in Florida. Like he's- Absolutely. And, and and did you see the defense on last week's game? I mean, they, 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 they racked up like so many uh, penalties for over 100 and something yards. You know, I mean, they were just killing the. I mean, they they got a sack, then they it was a hold, it was roughing the passer. I mean, it was just it was just really bad. I mean, the Jets defense just they're awful. They they really are, you know. And and so uh, I'm for it. I'm like Gase got to go. But l- let's talk about the Giants. I mean, the Giants aren't doing any better. I mean, look look at where they are right now. I mean, oh, oh my god, it's like it's like the football god said, you had potential this year, but we're just gonna we're we're gonna put you down like old Yeller, unfortunately. Oh, take you back and beat you because they have a slew of injuries headed their way. 
Oh, it's just terrible. I mean, think about it. You know, Eli Manning must be laughing in his, uh, you know, watching oh, where, wherever he is. Yeah, he's just he's... like, wow, you replaced me with this guy. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, he's taking a Daniel Jones is taking a step back, and uh, uh, he's definitely regressed. Um, I mean, he's not throwing the ball with pinpoint accuracy like he was doing uh, last year uh, when he replaced Eli, and so. Uh, what do you do with the Giants team? Plus, you know, their running back's not that great. I mean, he's not get you know, uh, and he's been hurt, right? And um, their wide receiving core is, is not that great either. So, again, here's what we're talking about. If you don't have the right weapons around the right quarterback, then you're not going to have a successful team. And, um, you know, I mean, you, you, you think this guy would have carried the Giants on their backs, but... The Giants are in the same position that the Jets are. They're they're looking to draft a number one quarterback, I guess, you know? Hey, hey Dad, we're going to have to take a break with our sponsor. All right. uh, So we'll be right back, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Ever feel like you're traveling down the road, and you have a long commute, which most of you guys are listening to this podcast or probably driving in your cars right now commuting somewhere, eh? You guys are probably like, oh, I just drank some coffee. I might have to go (laughs) use the bathroom. I'm here to tell you, Dad, don't fear anymore. You don't have to stop at your local gas station or a restaurant or go to a hotel and say, oh, I'm just here to use your bathroom, and they tell you to get out. That's awkward and embarrassing. (laughs) But. Everyone has cheap toilet paper nowadays, whether you're going to the gas station, that hotel, wherever the case may be. But now there are dude wipes on the go. There you go. Now, we hated using toilet paper, so they created flushable dude wipes. Wet wipes specifically for cleansing your dude's region. Individually wrapped or in a 48-count dispenser, your dude parts are in good hands with dude wipes all right and we're back from our little break here uh i believe we were talking about the jets last time with Adam oh, well, Gaze. I, yeah i mean we were talking about the jets we we're talking about the giants and uh uh you know how uh disappointing oh, the, the giants football season. how oh. hurt they are yeah new york hey buffalo bills there you there go you- <laughs> If you're there a New you York fan, you gotta you gotta go with the Bills because uh, Josh Allen, MVP season. Call me crazy, this dude might just win the MVP. I I absolutely agree. I mean, the guy's got a focus. He uh, you know it's hard to blitz him because he he can run away from you, you know, and uh, and eat up yards. Uh, I mean, he's uh, he's doing really has well. Good, has good connection with his receivers, Stephon Diggs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what they they're definitely going to the playoffs for sure unless something catas- uh, catastrophic happens. Oh, um, I've, I've, absolutely. I um, you know, but uh, hey, let's talk New England for a little while because I know we got New England fans out there and uh Cam Newton getting COVID, you know, and he's now in COVID protocols. I mean, where did that come from, you know? I mean, so I and, uh, just want to know how it happens because you're gonna have a full roster healthy covid test to everyone and only your quarterback gets it now call me crazy because i need to do research on it um but he's the only person on the team that contracts the virus what he it it's him him yeah either he didn't follow he didn't follow protocols or and you know we had that problem. I mean, with the NBA guys, you know they were they were in that bubble uh, when they started the the restarted the NBA season, and a couple of guys went out, and you know a couple of guys brought girls into the into the the hotels they were staying, and then they had to go through the whole protocol thing again. You know, so uh, you you don't know what. Happened. But you know the funny thing is is that the guy that they're the team that they're playing this Sunday. Uh, and I forget who this team, the team is, but their backup quarterback got COVID, you know? So that's like really weird. It's, and he's just the one guy. Um, but now, wouldn't it be something now if, if the backup for New England comes in there and, and just plays his heart out? 
you know, and 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 you're like because I mean he was uh, ready. Tom to, Brady got to start. Yeah, I mean he was ready to he was ready to take over the team, and then they signed uh, Cam Newton, you know, uh, which is a really good good deal for the uh, New England Patriots because it gave him a one year contract, uh, and he went out and he's proven that he's you know he's still the guy, you know, but. Now, now the backup quarterback comes in, and they were going to hand him the reins. I mean, and I think Bill Belichick gets, uh, you know, every bit that he can out of a quarterback. I mean, that's his his big thing. I mean, he can get out of players that were from other teams that were useless and get them to, uh, you know, become like real contributing players to to New England. So whatever Bill does, you know, he he does a great job. I agree. Uh, first and foremost, the uh, coronavirus is very serious, and we obviously want to wish Cam Newton a speedy and healthy recovery. Um, oh yeah, it's a absolutely. terrible. It's it, it's a terrible thing. Um, I'm just baffled and confused on how he got it, and the rest of the team didn't. But I can I can guarantee you this that. New England will probably come out with the W. Well, you know, you that's the one thing about Bill Belichick that he's Oh, he's actually, gonna have time it. out, time out. I'm sorry. Hold the podcast because they are facing the goddamn Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. No way they are coming out of this with a win. I, <laughs> I take that all back. Um, sorry, I had a mental block. Did not know who they were facing. Uh, just remembered. They are facing the motherfucking Kansas City Championship Chiefs. Yes. With uh, that's Patty gonna Mahomes. Be, yeah, that's going to be a, a really – I mean, he didn't have a great game, though, last week. So, you know, he did not have a great game, uh, uh, you know, last week. So, I, I just – Patrick Mahomes? He, yeah. I mean, what was his stats last week? Last week? I'll find out. But – if if I can if I could defend his, this guy's honor, uh, he just found out he was having a fucking baby. I'm gonna look at his stats right here. Let's see, he's playing against, yeah, he was playing against the the fucking Ravens. So they're they're a great team. The Ravens yeah. are a great team. So let's see, he threw 31 for 42 uh, in completions, uh, which is fantastic. It's 73 percent. It's better than Sam Darnold. Through over 350 yards for he do through 380. Now, yeah, you're just you're on some kind of drug, and I want it because <laughs> this dude had a fantastic game. Uh, 385 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions, and what was his passer rating? Yeah, one 133. Go kick rocks. What are you What are you talking about? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, my I, I I didn't get to see the game last week, so I that's my my fault. Ladies but, and uh, gentlemen, my my dad forgot to take his Geritol. So. Bill Belichick, you know, he's this that you you can never count Bill Belichick teams out because they find a way to win. So, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the quarterback, the backup quarterback, throws for you know two hundred and eighty yards and three touchdowns because that's. That's just the way Bill Belichick rolls, you know. I want to talk a little Mets, uh, even oh, though course. they're... Something near and dear to your heart. Oh, I got to talk Mets, though, only because Steve Cohen, you know, uh, if he if he's voted in by November, uh, then uh, hopefully they'll vote him in by Octo the end of October. Um, you know, the Mets are going to have money to spend next year, and they're not that far away. I mean, they've got good lineup. Um their, their starting pitching just suffered such a great loss uh, with with Noah Syndergaard getting hurt, Marcus Stroman opting out for the season. So it was just one of those things that just snowballed. They never got a winning streak, a really good winning streak going. I think the most they won was three in a row, maybe four in a row. So but their, uh, hitting, their hitting is there. Their hitting was they, they were number one in the league in in Listen. in in average. Number one in the league in on base percentage, but they also were like you know towards the bottom uh, uh, with two outs. Even though the last week of the season, they you know last two weeks of the season, they were hitting a lot with two outs. But uh, 
you know, they, they just their pitching was there and their bullpen was atrocious. You know? Let me tell you something, brother. What are you? The Rock now, all of the a Met, sudden? Yes. The <laughs> Mets. This I guarantee you a whole bunch of young people are going to be gunning for a contract for the New York Mets. And I will say that a top priority for the New York Mets is Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer is is baseball. He is the grunt. Well, he's the he's the, num- the he's the number one guy up on the he's he, the number one guy out, out there in the free agents world yeah, this he, this year. He needs to he needs to be protected. Uh, I think the Mets are, will be willing to protect him because um, he has a mouth on him. He's cocky. He's arrogant. And I think that's something that the New York Mets need. Uh, I feel like he has a New York attitude. Um, Trevor, Trevor Bauer could end up in, on the New York Mets roster for sure. I, um, I, think, I think what the Mets need, you know, is starting pitching. So Trevor Bauer is number one. Uh, I think that they should invest money and pick up George Springer. First of all, uh, he's, a, he's a center fielder. You know, uh, he he hits for well, average. He hits for power. But beside that, let's just focus on their pitching because um, JT Ramuto yep, is yep. a Free agent. long dream. Uh, he's a Mets fan. Wow. Uh, so, so and and uh, here's the other thing. I know Bryce Harper wants the Phillies to sign uh, uh, Trevor. Ba- I mean, uh, sign Rio Muto, but. He's a free agent for the first time, and uh, if uh, I don't know who his agent is, but he's going to test the, the free agent market. He's going to make money. Now the thing is, do the Mets sign him? You know, I don't who's, think who's who's, it, who's the Mets first baseman right now. Well, right now it's Pete Alonso. You, know? you move Pete. Al- you move Pete Alonso to third, or I don't. No, you move no. You, no, what you move you, JT Ramuto to third because JT is a catcher, right? So he could probably adjust fairly easily to third base. I think the problem is that the Mets need a catcher like JT, I mean, Rio Muto behind the plate. First of all, he calls a great game. He's a great defensive catcher. Um, and, and the Mets just haven't had that in the, few, in the last few years. Uh, Wilson Ramos is a decent catcher. But he's not a defensive guy. He doesn't call a great game. He doesn't get down and block the balls. Uh, I mean, he's basically a hitter. And, and more likely, he ends up uh, as a DH somewhere in, in the American League. So uh, you got to sign a guy like him. Um, and what it's going to take to sign him? I mean, what are you going to do? Um, but you can't do lo- like they did with the other catchers, you know, like uh, McCann and... Uh, who's another catcher out there that they signed these eight year contracts because he's in his thirties. You know, I, I, I don't know exact age. I think he's 30, 31, but who Ramos. Yeah. Um, no, I'm talking about Rio Muto. You know, he's like 30, 31. You can't he's sign him. He's 29, 29. So he'll be 30 when they do sign him. And, but do you give a guy like this an eight year contract on a catcher? That's proven oh, to be no. the worst, worst scenario because all these catchers, these great catchers who sign these eight-year contracts, they're good for like two, three years, and then they're done or they move it to another position. Now, what you can do with Rio Muto, offer him thirty million dollars a year for four years. Oh, that's that's so much money. I, I listen. He's he's a Mets fan, right? He he want he wants to play with them. I think yeah. they can not get him at a bargain. But they can sign him for a few years. Yeah, to, I don't think they uh, get. I don't think he looks like because don't forget this is probably going to be his last big free agent signing. So by giving him, um, by not getting a, a a great contract or the best he can get out of it, he's looking to take care of his future. You know, so you know he's looking to sign for a lot of money and a lot of years. And if there's a team that wants to give him the, all that, he's probably going to go there. I mean, he's not going to give the Mets that discount. Now, he'll listen. But then again, you can always do the, um, you know, four years at $30 million apiece. 
that's $120 million for four years. That'll sell him up for life, you know? So maybe he takes something like that. I, I don't know, but we need to get him. And uh, uh, the good thing is that uh, Steve Cohen is a multi-billionaire. So he's got the money. Uh, it's the first time the Mets have had anybody with real money in years and years, you know? So they can go yeah, out. And willing and, to spend. And spend. That's the big thing. So, you know, when you got somebody who's willing to spend, besides the fact Steve Cohen is a lifelong Mets fan and he wants to win, you know, so he's going to he's going to go out there and says, hey, listen, get what we need. Let's win it next year, because with with DeGrom, his window is very small now. And so if we don't do something in the next two or three years, you know, I mean, his window is small because don't forget DeGrom's in his 30s. So how long will he be dominant? So. Anyway, that's that's my take on the Mets. I, I, I believe that they they need to, you know, they get Sandy Alderson coming back so he doesn't have uh, Fred Wilpon to tie his, his uh, you know, tie his hands. And um, now the thing is, does he keep uh, does he t- keep the general manager? You know, I mean, he signed he yeah. signed a, a four year contract. If you're the team president, you want to get your own guy in there. So does he? Do the Mets, uh, he's in his third year of a four-year contract, do the Mets keep him? Or do they just buy him out and bring a new guy in? And then what's that do for uh, Luis uh, Rojas? Uh, do the Mets keep him as a manager? You know, did he show enough as a rookie manager thrown into the fire, really, because of the whole Car- Carlos Beltran thing? Or, you know, do does the new general manager, the new president, you know, say, hey, let's get somebody a little more experienced in here. Let's get somebody else. I, I think it would be wrong to do that because he seems to be a great communicator. He's young and he didn't make mistakes as far as, you know, bringing people in and taking people out. Uh, but his bullpen was just just plain awful. You know, I mean, that's the that's the problem the Phillies had. The Phillies had a good hitting squad, but their bullpen, boy, you 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 have a three, four run lead and you bring the bullpen in. The Phillies were just Blowing up every time they uh they hit in there, they just threw you know gasoline on the fire. Anyway, that's my Mets rant for the day. <laughs> yeah, that's that gets anyone's blood pressure up, and I feel for you. <laughs> but luckily, not my circus, not my monkeys. At least with that baseball team, uh, I'm lucky enough to not have struggled for so many years in baseball. Yeah, you and your Being high, a New York Yankees fan. Highly vaulted Yankees. Yeah. Hey, so we don't have a good we don't have a good outro yet, ladies and gentlemen, but we thank you for spending your time with us on um, Dad Talks. It's it's been fun and uh you know, we'll be back again and uh you know, we'll be t- maybe taking some of your questions later on. And so, uh, hey, this is uh, Popo from Gun Hill Depot saying, hey, goodbye, so long, farewell, and have a good night. And this is Tony from the Firehouse saying see you later. All right, Tony. Talk to you later.